Wallens for me was a graveyard. It's just a fact. Mm. You know, like when I was in a project, we probably had over a hundred friends. Not to exaggerate to tell you the truth, I probably had over a hundred friends, people I know that died, like ninety four, ninety five, mm. ninety six. So at the end of the day, I just wanted to make it where I could just get away from it. I I, I can't stay away. I gotta visit, I gotta go there. My fam my whole family's still there. I'm the only one gone, but at the end of the day, I I just wanted to get away. I wanted to live. I didn't want to die. You know, I didn't want to die. I just felt like I had got shot up two different times. I got shot up when I was younger, four times in my back with a three fifty seven. I got shot in Ooh. my neck. I got shot in my neck with an AK. Right now, if you, when y'all see me in my in my face, in the bottom of, by my neck, an AK came out of my mouth. I just it was so much stuff I had survived. I had I went to jail for on robbery. I went to jail. I was I was in and out of jail. I was in and out of trouble. I just was a problem. Like I just feel like and in the Iberville when I came out of the house our whole life like I was staying on Robertson. When you come out and you walk on the balcony, all you see is a graveyard. Like I like I just feel like I was trapped. Like and but I knew I had that talent. Even when we was hustling, everybody said crazy. You could rap. I used to grab a mic all the time. So I kind of I just feel like. I didn't want to stray too far. Like, I didn't want to go to no another country or nothing because I love New Orleans. New Orleans is me. All my friends, like, when I go home and I see them now, I see if I see my partner, Jap, you know, or I see different people, all my breeders, you know, Brenna, Doa, Sweezer, different people I see, I just, I be like, man, I want to move back home because I miss, I miss them. I miss them people. But at the end of the day, it's about growth and life. I know New Orleans for me is a drug. Like, if I go down there, I'm going to get into something. Or they got somebody down there that I, when I, was, when I wasn't this family man or when I wasn't this father, they got somebody I probably had a problem with. We just shot at each other. Guess what? They probably been in jail for these 20 years that I've been a father. And guess what? When they see me, they still feel the same way they felt 20 years ago. They'll leave me flat right there. They don't care about me being no father, no husband. They'll kill me right there. they kill me dead. And guess what? Mm. Even now, as a father, if they if I see them, they gon' you know they know what they looking for. You see, you see what I'm saying? Because I know that's a person that that hurt me. So guess what? I lay him for that. If I see him, even though I ain't looking for him, but if I see somebody look like him, Jesus might have to come down and tell me it ain't him. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and see, the thing is, oh, you're not in the <laughs> Look, that's, look, they call that the divine intervention. Look, we can't have the animal crazy no more. We got to have domestic husband crazy. We got to have yeah. loving father crazy. Yeah. We got to have yeah. family man and, crazy. We can't have yeah. wild and not crazy. Really, and not really, not really either an uh, animal. It's just more or less, it's like, um, it's a, you know, Slim had a song called It's Soldier Life. It's hard to maintain. It's soldier life mentality. I used to love it. I was in the studio when he did the song. The thing about it, it's, it's just like, bro, people be talking about, they got people that been to the war, that been to the war and get medals and stuff just for coming back home. They ain't had no combat, they ain't had nothing. They just, they just went out there and survived Desert Storm and they come back and get medals. Let me tell you something, man. I've been in a project my whole life from the Melbourne Mean to the Iberville. I've been seeing people die since I was six years old. I've been walking over dead bodies, going to William J. Gus and the, the Melf walk over dead bodies. And I ain't talking about dead strangers, I'm talking about people I know. My homeboy home in the Iberville, I seen a lot of my friends. When I got shot in my in my face, my partner whole face got blowed off. He had ten thousand a ten thousand dollar hit on his head. I was drunk in the club. I thought my other partners left me. I come downstairs and he said, Crazy, I give you a ride right quick. I jump in the car with him. They was waiting in the parking lot. When I got in the car, I seen a nigga running to the car. They shot the car forty some time. His whole face was blowed off. I just got shot one time in my neck. They mm. shot the car up 40 something times with machine guns, and I lived. I got shot four times in my back with a 357, and I lived. I can't tell you all the shootouts I done been in. It felt like an angel was standing right there. I'm, somebody walked up on me. One time I had took a starter jacket from a dude, and I was shooting dice, and a nigga come walk right up on me and emptied a whole clip of a tech, a tech nine, emptied the whole clip. When I turned around, I couldn't even run. I saw the dude, I could see the fire coming out the gun, the dude standing right in front of me, like eight feet in front of me. Everybody at the dice game ran, this dude emptied the whole take nine at me. I couldn't run because I, I saw him, I saw who it was, he took the hood off and, and let me see it was him because he, he thought he was about to kill me. And my feet couldn't move. 
I saw the fire coming out the gun, and I was looking at him. I couldn't breathe. I said, he got me. I said, oh, man, it's this dude, but I couldn't run. Guess what? The nigga emptied all his bullets. The nigga looked at me, and I looked at him. I still couldn't move. And get what the nigga said. You a lucky motherfucker. I get you. I catch you again. And that nigga jogged off. 